everybody, and welcome to the Casual Esports Amateur League. Week 5 for the Demasi Division between Mundo Licious and Ace Venturas. I am your play-by-play uh, -play -play caster, Death Adder, and with me as always is Joe Killera. Hello there. I am going to be your color caster on this fine evening. Well, it's uh, February uh, the 13th, Thursday, just just barely missing that Friday the 13th there, Joe. So no bad luck, hopefully, tonight for uh, Mundo Licious or Ace Venturas, but only one team will most likely prevail here. Yeah. Uh, honestly, uh, going into this game, there's a lot to prove for both teams. Uh, Mundo Licious can snag first place if they win out. Ace Venturas, they can get second place if they went out here. So there's a there's a lot on the line, uh, especially this being uh, one of the later weeks in the uh, playoffs. Right, nowhere to nowhere to go after this week, Joe. Uh, st standings will be as followed, uh, depending on you know where uh, where these teams match and what happens with these last games here in the the Demasi Division. It'll be. Uh, It'll be an interesting show, show of to see if uh, Mundo Licious is able to actually surpass um, Cloud Seven. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, <clears throat> so I believe we are going to get into game. Um, what team is losing two bands again? I'm sorry. Um, so because Mundo Licious is a uh, had to make that second uh, minute or that last minute sub with Kazoo in the mid lane Vortex yeah. unable to make it to the series, uh, it, they will, it will cost them two bands. Uh, I believe that's just the, f the first game? Or, or uh, no, that is both games they will be losing those bands there. So, Joe. yeah, so this is going to be uh, uh, not so great for uh, Mood Delicious. Losing two bands and a, and a five band system is a not ideal no it is not um and just just looking at these uh stats for both of these teams joe it, it very much appears that mundo licious has a slight edge just numbers wise it's looking um team comps it's it's also looking like mundo licious also has been playing first uh looking like to set up maybe a misfortune or having an ash um adc and, and playing around those things mm. um so potentially a, a really strong team fight um, comp from Mundo Licious, whereas Ace Venturas um, has a little bit of a, a little bit of MF uh, setup synergy of their own. So I will believe that I do believe that Misfortune will be picked or banned here. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. Just looking at it, it will be grabbed uh, probably within the first band phase. Yes, but I'd also like to see a Ash um, as a counter pick um, with it because she has that uh, really good poke with her it's... w and then she can stop mf ulti in a tv2 right. well the thing is ultimate. also that uh la polina being on ash it's funny because <laughs> um a mad hacker actually plays sivir too so like he counters like sivir can you could say in, in in theory could counter an ash so oh yeah 100 so like it's it's like what happens if if, if Misfortune gets banned, it's going to mm -hmm. push Lapolina more towards Ash, but is that going to also mean that he's going to naturally just get counterpicked by the Sivir? Um, yeah. ADC-wise, it'll be interesting to... Oh, see. yeah, that would be... That'd be something to watch out for. Um, I believe we are going to be starting soon. Here. Yeah, uh, yeah segue into the... <laughs> The pro draft. I believe they are getting a few last things in line. Yeah. Uh, There's I'm not gonna, a lot of. We're probably gonna see MF band uh, first here. That's my that's my prediction. And then uh, I think uh, AG TL will be you know banned uh, out. Um, he pretty much only plays um, Mundo and Master Yi and Olaf. Um, he does have Xin Zhao as one of his um, favorite champions, but I don't know if he plays him to a competitive level. Um, but that is something to look for. Um, yeah, Mundo Licious <clears throat> having a. Uh... 
first pick here, but not having much bands to to cushion that pick around. Um, Ace Ventura is definitely going to have just pretty much priority in both these drafts with that uh that tax of having those uh those subs in for the lineup on Moon Delicious. Now, there's not a lot known on the mid lane for Ace Ventura's uh, Marquez Brownie. Um, it looks like he's lately played consistently from his last 20 to 40 game set, but he's just played a lot of everything, so it's hard to really pinpoint what to expect out of the mid lane from Ace Ventura's. Mm. Uh, so, Caitlyn Band coming out on the side of Ace Ventura's. Uh, Caitlyn is pretty strong champion right now um 650 range she is getting buff next patch <clears throat> so we'll probably see her a lot more being pick ban um but uh, otherwise I, I i can't disagree with a caitlin ban right now so like like we said the malphite ban uh coming out as well um I, I'm, I'm not sure what Moon Delicious can ban back here. Um, Looks like they're aiming for the top lane. Uh, uh, J Rob does play some Cho'Gath, even though I believe Cho'Gath is played on their side as well. Ah, uh, yes, yes. Katarina ban coming out. So they are targeting uh, uh, Kazoo there. Kazoo's uh, played quite a bit of cat. Hmm. I'm I'm interested in what Moon Delicious uh what they're gonna pick here. Uh just I because the, the first pick usually decides how draft will flow. So MF does get picked out here. So the best thing to do right now for Ace Venturas is to pick their bot lane and just hard counter misfortune. You never really want to pick uh, uh an AD carry first, especially in a, the five v five competitive setting. So we are going to see the Sivir there. Um, not necessarily a really strong counter to Misfortune. Sivir is able to clear a wave and kind of stay out of that Misfortune threat yeah. range for the most part. So yeah, I wouldn't it's... say it's much of a counter as much as it is something to just kind of negate that all in, hopefully. Yeah, Misfortune does have the uh, 50 range advantage. So the Amumu gets picked instead of a support. So Moon Delicious can counter Amumu here. Olaf is still on the table. Uh, uh, Captain YDP has been playing the jungle for Ace Ventures. He's playing nothing pretty much besides Sejuani and Amumu, so okay. very strong pick for their jungle. Yeah. So they they usually like their their jungler on a tank, kind of like how we like Stro on that early game carry. <laughs> it's very important to have okay. your jungle. So Misfortune role. Nautilus into Sivir is actually really, really gross. Um for the side of Moon Delicious. Yeah, Sivir only able to spell shield one of those CCs. Yes, and Misfortune can uh, break the spell shield with her uh, Make It Rain, her E, the uh, AoE slow. So if Sivir misuses her spell shield, um, her she's pretty much DOA because she'll just get Nautilus ultied. Having that Olaf also in the, yeah. in the pick uh, definitely going to affect the ability for a Mumu to peel in these uh, late game skirmishes or the early game counter ganks or just the double, the, just seeing two jungles in lane after six Olaf. Okay, able so to just double walk through a double Mumu. special bot lane. Um, this actually does change the mix up a little bit because yeah. now they are able to potentially avoid an entire all in early, depending on if Morgana maxes that bl that um, black shield. Yeah, but um, honestly, here I wouldn't want Morgana to max spell shield. I would, I would want her to max out her W. Yeah, um, tormented soil uh, yeah. is the amount of damage it does. So I yeah, do the, just the amount more. of damage it does, and then you she would able she would be able to punish more on the um, on the poke from Sivir because it scales with missing HP. So, right. Um, so, so if Sivir chunks a Nautilus or Misfortunes, uh, Morgana can follow up and get a, a a really nice trade, and then they can extend that into a CS lead. I will say that it's about the as, as good of a pick as you can take into that bot lane for a support in this matchup. Just yeah. it's, it's, so, it is it is like kind of risky, but out. 
I think uh, it's a decent pick. Yeah. Uh, for for bands here, I want to see a another mid laner ban or for for Medalicious. Uh, probably like maybe like an Aatrox or. Hmm. I'm not really I'm not really sure what I want to see here, but I want to see a top laner ban again. Okay, yeah. So Warren, perfect. Uh, Warren is. So Marcus Brownie strong. will take the Zed. I was I was really curious. That's the only thing I had written down under his champions for pick ban is just Zed with a question mark. I'm like, uh, Zed maybe yeah. like, and it is Zed. So. Yeah, that was really smart by the Delicious uh, to take away another tank from uh, Ace Venturas because uh, if, if they had another engaged tank like Orn on the table with the Moomoo, that, that was an easy uh, Orn horn into an Amumu uh, Curse of the Sad Mummy. Cassidy being picked up by uh, Moon Delicious. Yeah, that is not a good matchup uh, for the Cassidy uh, until late game. Zed will chunk him pretty hard because I believe I believe Cassidy has like what, like less than twenty armor, level one. Yeah, it's like twenty maybe on the dot. Yeah, uh, it's, it's like it's low. really really he low. Has, he has really high base MR, I believe. But uh, yeah, that's a, why he's he an has low base. Yeah, yeah, that's why he has low base armor though. They have, they have to like. Okay, so Nar being, Nar being uh, picked up by Mundelicious. Steve-O, uh, 7600, one of his bigger champions here is is Nar, so. Yeah, so maybe maybe I'd, I'd want to see like a Fiora pick, honestly. Oh, uh, because he, of the Maokai, does manage to pick that second tank there. Okay, yeah, so they are going for a Wombo combo like nobody's ever seen before. You got the, the Maokai R into the Amumu R, followed up with the Morgana R. They are, if they are comboed correctly, they will not move for a while except Olaf if he has uh, Berserker's Rage. With the Zed ultimate plus the Sivir spell shield and a Morgana spell shield, Twisted Advance, things like these are going to allow... Uh... Ace of Insurance to actually have a superior um, counter engage to a uh, potential engage from, say, the Cassidy or a Nautilus all in or yeah. Nar all in. The fact that they can negate all this um, MR, whereas Olaf's really the only one able to negate any other MR without buying any items. Uh, it will be interesting to see if that, that actually takes a, a role in on these team fights in the games to come or in the game to come here. Mm. Yeah. Um, so. Uh, It'll be pretty pivotal moments, uh, seeing if they're able to negate that that hard CC by Moon Delicious. As they as we get into game here, I am going to uh, say a, a few words before I run off and use the bathroom. Um, there are there are a, like there's certain win conditions early game um, for Ace Venturas that they probably won't see. Um, early game, I would I would want to see them invade constantly uh, with Zed and the Mumu, um, just just running into the Olaf's jungle, um, just because Olaf is really susceptible to CC early game, um, and especially if you, if you have an uh, an Amumu, uh that just holds him down for what what is it one and a half seconds while Zed full combos him, he's just gonna die. Yeah, definitely. Uh, without um, the uh, Berserker's Rage there. Yeah, and then, gonna... and then you would also have Topside moving down with you, uh, the Maokai and the Amumu just moving together. O Olaf isn't going to be able to move until he has level 6. Um, the win condition for Moondelicious is late game. Uh, probably around like level 13 or... Uh, like 13 to 11 is when Moon Delicious will be um, at their strongest overall. Uh, Kassadin will hyperscale into late game because he's Kassadin and he one shots any squishy late game. <clears throat> um, but but uh, but other than that, um, I I would say going into this game, looking at both teams, I feel like uh, Ace Venturas has the advantage. Yeah, I'd agree with you there. Just uh, having those two bands gone, giving them the draft advantage, and having uh, 
I'd say a slightly superior team fight potential. Um, anything they have lacking for them here, Joe, is potentially just some some stats on paper here when it comes to CS permitted and kill participation. Um, but having uh, Marcas Brownie in and having a uh, Kazuin kind of kind of shifts things into a more up in the air. Can't really tell. Yeah. So uh, how how high of a level or or rank rather is uh, Kazoo in comparison to the to the uh, Kazoo, normal Kazoo's mid laner? Kazoo's called four. So ah, okay. Uh, the typical mid laner is silver three. So it is a slight difference in uh, Elo uh, skill yeah. probably, but. Yeah. Um, the mid laner for um, Ace Ventura is a silver four, so okay. So it's it's not a massive uh, skill difference. It's not it's not like say like iron to to platinum, but right. it, it, it's 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 a little bit of a of a skill matchup. But but honestly, gold isn't anything to be like oh no, you know, right? Especially if you're like a silver player, yeah. Uh, I mean, imagine being gold three right now. I mean, I wouldn't yeah, be scared of a gold honestly, three player at all. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't be scared of a gold three player at all, especially one with like a twenty percent win rate. Right. But yeah. <laughs> Come yeah. on, man! Don't it do me like, like you, that. Man. Wow. Like you. Wow! Don't do me like that. We're Jeez. we're on stream. You don't play him on the stream. <laughs> Big sidewalk defender. Your friend, uh, on the other ADC for Team yeah, Billy. Yeah, he's yeah, like he, a, he's he, plat, I believe. So yeah. Yeah, wow. Um, <laughs> that's not you, so I mean I mean I mean it is me, but sure. You can't actually prove that. That's just you uh, smurf on a I, smurf. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's me on a it's me on a smurf. It's higher than my main kill. You, re Season reverse. 10 is doomed. Reverse. Season 10 is doomed. When when you start realizing your entire real life was just smurfing for your alt life. Yeah. You just Jesus, get me out. Get me out. <laughs> I feel like these lads are taking a long time to get through a pick and ban phase they've already set up. Uh, well, Joe, what do you think? First, uh, first dragon and first, uh, first team to take it. I'm gonna say Ocean, and I'm gonna give it to, say... Ace Ventura's. I'll say Mountain. Uh, who's Red Side? Oh. Um, that would be Moondelicious. Will be okay. On the I'll blue give it to Moondelicious. Ace, Ace Ventura's will be on the red side. Okay. Yeah. Moondelicious. Uh, Mountain. Did they just failed the draft somehow there. Yeah. So we have some technical difficulties. <laughs> it's going to be delayed by like seven minutes. Uh, so. Uh, as these technical difficulties uh, get addressed, I think we're going to take a couple minute break and then switch it over once we're back in game. Sounds fair enough.
Hey, hey, hey. <clears throat> How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to Casual Amateur Esports League. Uh, shit, I mean, like, we're actually in now, Joe. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, we're here. Uh, yeah, so a lot of technical difficulties. Wouldn't it be a uh, seal game without Riot just giving us the yield shaft? Um, <laughs> And, I really couldn't uh, have said uh, it better myself. Yeah, uh, honestly, honestly, at this point, it's to be expected. Uh, Riot, you know, we're we're just trying to have some fun today, and then Riot's client is just like, no, you know, they have two hundred years of collective game dev experience, but they can't make a functional client. That isn't a knock on them; it's just a fact. Um, but but going into this game, uh, two bands were missed. By uh, Moodalicious or yeah, Moodalicious. So they were not able to um, uh, ban two times because of uh, Kazoo. Yeah, just sub issues. Yeah, there we yeah, go. Yeah, just being subbed in. So uh, that is just one thing um, that was probably not mentioned for the people that joined the stream just a few moments ago this is game one we haven't started yet so i'm looking at general kill participation for moon delicious and it seems that everyone seems to be right around 60 percent or higher whereas on uh ace ventura's their kp uh, does dip a little lower in the jungle and mm -hmm. adc section uh going into this game i am I'm 100% uh, expecting a invade on the side of uh, Aced. Uh, just because of their team, Morgana can start her uh, Dark Binding. Amumu can take his, bandit to his uh, Bandage Toss, you know. Um, yeah, so we're, we're going to see some level 1 cheese. Uh, and if we don't, I will be extremely, extremely sad. And we don't really like a sad Joe. Yeah, we like we don't. Feel pretty happy. Yeah, we like we like we like Stro being a little bit sad, but not. Sometimes sad Stro is pretty funny. Yeah, and then and then you say inwards guardian, and he just implodes because yeah. he he cannot contain his uh his laughter. Yeah, Stro, he he tries so hard that when you make him laugh in games like that, like in the situation, he was actually telling me to to stop talking, but also laughing at what I was saying. Yeah, he was like, "Please, I just want to sit here and and mauled." And I'm like, "But what if it was funny?" <laughs> yeah, and uh, on honestly, he he can't come up with anything that can uh, get past that. All right, so we are heading into game here. Uh, game one, Moon Delicious versus Ace Ventura. Uh, Gosh, I am just so happy. Uh, yeah, what do, what are you happy for, Adder? I'm just I'm just glad that it's loading up. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, you know, game, it, it, we were probably already supposed to be in game two, but that's okay. That's I think, right. I mean, we're not really hurt too bad. I think right now we'd be like, I think we're like 20 minutes behind. Yeah, I mean, I mean that that honestly, that's fine. I, that's like, yeah. that's kind of a game behind, but whatever. Yeah, we're we're just sitting here, we're we're talking about League of Legends and how League of Legends works and League of Legends stuff. I mean, yeah. I really wish that they'd make like. Jeez, never mind. I'm not even gonna go on that tangent. It's really not even worth it. Yeah, I, they can barely make a functional client. You think they're gonna add anything to this? Game? I was thinking about a champion that's like a cooking pot, right? He's like a giant kettle, right? Yeah. And I have no clue what he would do, but he would be a kettle, and he'd be what, probably what he a support. Be, would he be filled with anything? Um, would he, would he as have, like, you a nice, level like, up. Brunswick stew going on I mean, in there. So his passive would be like soup of the day. And, like, okay, he, soup of the day. He would like as he leveled up, like no. he'd have a similar thing to Ophelia. So you can start adding ingredients every uh -huh. three levels to him. And at level six, you can add a spice. Ah, uh, so you can, you can maybe be you can a, add uh, like some 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 thyme. You can add right, some like, add some paprika. Maybe some, maybe some red chili powder for Ooh. some burn damage. Oh, uh, okay. I'm not really. 
I'm not really really quite sure. Maybe his ultimate makes makes people eat out of him, mm-hmm. and makes uh, his 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 allies can eat from him and get certain buffs or something. He'd be like a really weird support. Uh, he, people he put sit. more blue ingredients. You get more mana regen. He picks, he picks up dead bodies from dead units or dead <laughs> champions or something, and like cooks them into him or something. Oh okay. god. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> All right. Uh, can we get a time? Uh, forty-one, forty-two. 42. Okay. Cool. Um, okay. Flash is burned. Oh. Okay. So like Dredgeline will catch out the Amumu there. Uh, they will just kind of burn him down. Yeah. Dark Binding lands, but another uh, dredge line landing on the Morgana here. Uh, really strong invade for. Uh... Wow. For boys, Moon Delicious. Yeah, Moon Delicious uh, catching out a Mumu early uh, is is really really good. Um, there's going to be a slight XP lead for the side of Moon Delicious because everybody was there, and I believe most. Uh, if not everybody, yeah, everybody got a uh, uh, an assist. So they split the EXP, they split the gold five different ways. You know, it, it's it's pretty good. They did use uh, full summoners on the Nautilus Flash on the uh, Misfortune and the Exhaust on the Cassidy. But otherwise, that was, there's a visual that was bug. It's a visual bug on Zed there. Oh. He had like a Morgana's like passive mark on him. Oh, that is uh... a little heart, a little lightning. Oh, it's not on him anymore, but it was. Oh, okay. <clears throat> At least on my screen. Yeah, I was like, what the heck? A little bit of a visual bug. That's the right classic. So, uh, you were correct. It was a Cloud Drake. So, congratulations. I think I guessed Ocean. Oh, did you? Okay. Okay. So I wasn't right. Okay, so we were both wrong. Nobody wins. <laughs> but I'm still saying that Ace of Insurance is going to get the first dragon. Alright. <clears throat> I, I, I also Red agree. Line lands on Morgana here. It's still level 1 trade. Uh, Flash will go out for both sides. I'm not sure if uh, Lafalina needed to burn Flash there. But, or burn heal, but he does. Yeah. Both heals down. Uh... They do or have a summoner advantage. Yeah, yeah, they do have summoner advantage. So, I don't um, think that summoner advantage is enough compared to the health advantage that they have on the Morgana right now. Oh yeah, that is uh, pretty significant. If Morgana gets caught out here, uh, they, she she'll get one shot. Um, both both spell, spell shields are... used as well. Yeah, you noticed that as well. She managed to get her spell shield out right before Morgana put Black Shield on her. Twisted Advance uh, coming out with just a little sap magic passive auto there from J-Rob. Sivo being Meganar. winning that trade. Ooh. Being the big dog, Meganar able to just tank the trade. Another spell shield on these dredge lines. The area is still looking, though. Really good timing by uh, both of them. Honestly, there there makes me nothing happier than just two tanks, ch- J chill in top lane. Uh, most people never know true happiness. Uh, like two tanks, just wet noodle fighting. Yeah, you are with that percentage damage on his W actually to able to chunk Mal Malkai, and he will. For th- the remainder of the game. I mean, there's no oh, getting yeah. around percentage damage. He, um, uh, J Rob did go, uh, <clears throat> what, what is it? It is Aftershock, yes, Aftershock. Um, so, he didn't go grasp in this matchup, which is a, uh, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't want to say not optimal, but Captain YPD Kyle here throws the bandage toss down. Silver Q and Silver roaming up there, able to collapse before uh, Olaf's able to get a tell. But HATL will fall there. Yeah. So going back to what I said earlier, if Olaf gets CC'd early game, um, he is pretty much dead. He has right. no survivability um, until he has his ultimate, because. With his ultimate, if it's not activated, he passively gets more armor and magic resist, but when it's deactivated, 
uh, uh, not deactivated, uh, activated, it gets, uh, he gets CC and vulnerability and, uh, more AD, so. Instead of looking on the aggression here. Bond even trade dredge line does land on demand hacker there. The passive root will not stand ignite on to where it's getting chased down. Dark fighting will land on here as for mind bottling, able to peel off that all in. No ignite for here as now. Low man on the sides of uh, Ace Ventura's. Flash coming out by Harris here, so manages to slow them. Zed's death mark coming in on to Kazoo Kazoo, not level six, and unable to get out of the tower range there. I'm not sure what happened with uh, Marcus Brownie. Um, unable to all in the cast incorrectly. Paying a mad big price there. <clears throat> that is so unfortunate for uh, Marcus Brownie. Yeah, you really don't want to give Cassid in that early kill gold. It just. Yeah makes him spike into the game that much earlier. E-Rob getting, uh, J-Rob getting all in here. Really low, yeah. Yeah. I don't know if he should stay here. Yeah. He might have his passive auto, but I don't know if he has enough mana there for uh, Twisted Advance. Yeah, this is, if he misplays here, he will die. So he does opt to back. AJTL caught out again, has to flash over the wall. Is a really good flash for the disengage there, but... Yeah. He he learned his lesson the first death, and he he knows to uh, to respect the CC. Steve -O will get a play here. Teleport is coming off from J Rob forty nine, so teleport will be down on the side of uh, Ace Ventura's for the time being. Both AD carries do have BF swords. Looking for that big damage, trying to chunk down the enemy ADC. Yeah, the big friendly sword is a uh, an ADC's best friend, truly. Kazoo now level six, able to skirmish and trade with uh, Zed a little bit. Even with that kill onto the uh, mid lane um, for the side of Moondelicious, he's still down in CS. So uh, I don't know if that's going to really make a difference anymore. Um, one kill is equivalent to 15 CS, roughly. AJTL so. getting invaded here. Flash and uh, Spanish Hoss comes out, including a Maokai ult. Yeah. Trying to catch him at blue. He does just alt out Ragnarok is used so able to just run that one out so ace is uh ace is doing pretty much what i said early or, or what they should do early um get early game invades onto the olaf shut him down early to be working out yeah, yeah. kind of getting bullied yeah they just have so much CC early game. So. Felina getting super low. MFL is coming out. Ignite onto uh, Hacker. He's able to get out with Ignite on him. Just barely taking down to under 100 health. Some still up for mind bottling. Uh, Flash is still able to be held by Mad Hacker in that all in also. Uh, Death Charge could have been used there, but wasn't it wasn't uh wasn't expended. Death Mark going on to HAL tier. He is turning and uh, throwing everything he can onto him, but it's not enough. Uh, Kazoo trying to follow up, but Captain YDP there on the move to peel him away after that fight. Yeah. So, uh, being this far uh, behind early game on Olaf is not ideal. Um, but but that just goes to show how uh, how coordinated Ace is. They seem to know what they want to do here. Shadow does come out, and it's like uh, Kazoo will try to chase down, but Mark S. Brown, he's still able to get away. Staying in lane here, I don't know if that's the right option. Uh, Kassadin is low enough mana that 
I don't think he can get all in. Gonna try landing onto the Morgana here, trying to root. She does have to flash and use her soul bonding. Zonius does go out, gets the double or single stare down onto Lefolina. She's able to turn an auto it down though. Yeah. Uh, that that was kind of an end. I I I don't know if there's any words that I can I can mince to trying make that to, not an end. Trying to get some vision control in the tri bush just <laughs> at the wrong time there, Joe. Yeah. There's a time and a place for everything. Oh, Meganar coming out. Nar does get land, but not able to stun on J Rob there. Uh, Felina doesn't manage to hit the slow. Beautiful spell shield by Man, Man Hijacker. It's getting rooted now. This works is all will come down, and Hera is able to pick it up with what looks like an E there. Yeah. Uh, Sivir ult did come out uh, a little bit delayed there, but uh, Hyaris and. Uh, and MF uh, did use a lot to uh, secure that kill. Mind Bottling does use the Black Shield and the Dark Binding. Yumus comes out, Deathmark onto Kazoo. Kazoo able to ult away from those uh, Qs there, negating a lot of that Deathmark damage. The bot lane CS difference um, for the side of Moon Delicious is becoming more and more apparent with the about 20 CS uh, advantage. For, Plus having a kill there and yeah. an assist advantage. Miss Fortune probably will finish her first item and get well into the second part of her second item yeah. by the time uh, Sivir finishes that. Uh, the, the only thing that I, I, I dislike about uh, MF's build path is that instead of uh, buying the... Steve might have overstayed here. Dark Binding does land, but we do see the Olaf Vault come out there. Going back to what I said, um, I, I don't like that she got uh, T2 boots uh, so early instead of just finishing her what I presume is a Infinity Edge. Um, yeah, getting that Infinity Edge power spike on Misfortune, I feel like it's a little bit more important than having Berserker's re Greaves. Yeah, and she Red really doesn't need there. Well. And, and Misfortune ult, they're queuing back into it though. Uh, they're choosing to still fight here, flashing forward. Uh, uh, Ula Polina will grab the Misfortune, and the Mumu ult does come out. Curse of the Mummy, Flash E trying to slow him on Cap and YPD. Deathmark onto Lapolina now, instantly gets shredded by Marcus Brownie. Ares is all around alone in the river here, and the turn back around onto him, Ignite onto him. Marcus Brownie will pick up the double kill here. Really well played by uh, Marcus. The Flash being used uh, early by the Misfortune was probably not ideal. ADCs need to hold on to that thing like it's gold. Solid gold bullion. Back here, Mark has probably able to get away, even though exhausted. Uh, he is possibly getting collapsed on here. Uh, gonna have to try to find the escape. Yeah, Stevo is just watch right into Stevo here. <laughs> <laughs> just locked right into him. Uh, uh, unfortunate passing there. Maybe should have shot down under Wolf's and maybe looked yeah. to back uh, at their uh, topside jungle entrance on a base. Yeah, but I, I don't believe they had vision, uh, like deep vision there, so very unfortunate. This child is coming out now for Moon Delicious, looking to possibly take first brick here with this uh, Rift Herald. Dredgeline does land onto Mad Hacker. Spell Shield will go down, and a double up in auto will take him with the Misfortune. Yeah, uh, Misfortune is at a. At a, a point where she is going to chunk you so hard and so fast that you don't know, like, that you're dead before you hit the ground. Moon Delicious really picked up gross. the tempo. Yeah. Whoa. Uh, Nar, oh, there's Steve <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Nar getting a little bit too antsy uh, does whiff, uh, but it was a good attempt. Farkas Brownie with the roam up, though. Is able to land the wall up to stun him. Captain YDP and Marcus Brony will head back down. Unable to catch him, catch out in the top lane.
now this is League of Legends. Yeah, this is uh, this is a game of quality that I just wasn't expecting. I am uh, thoroughly impressed right now by Moodalicious uh, and their and just their coordination right now. So it seems that the the ADC for Aced is has fallen into the same pitfall that uh, Misfortune did, and that is getting T two boots first instead of getting a full item. Um, Berserker is coming out of Yulvalina, just melting him like second time. Oh. This is just a repeat of what happened in the river there, Joe. Heal was used as well, so he just got popped. It's just it not was, enough. It, it it was not enough at all. But um Yeah, that tier two that tier two boots pitfall like you were yeah, saying anyways. Yeah, it's pretty the, huge. Yeah, the tier two boots pitfall is when you're behind but you just get boots so you're even further behind. You're setting yourself back eleven hundred gold instead of getting a full item. I mean and you and you get what? Like 15 20 more move speed when you get t2 boots it's not that significant um early like early game if you already have tier one boots it's like you're setting yourself back 1100 gold you're not getting a full item um well, also Sivir doesn't necessarily need it nor does misfortune from the fact that they have uh nat, a nat attack speed built into their kits yeah exactly um, so it even furthers that yeah. uh Sivir's passive is when she hits a unit or or an enemy champion she gets more movement speed so it's like really easy to kite with her right and plus when she her when she hits six her w yeah. active increases her attack speed so yeah and I, i'm pretty sure it's like the level two or three uh W is like the same amount of attack speed as Berserker's Greaves. Uh, Captain just got caught caught out there, just got sauced and tossed by the Meganar there oh. and the Nautilus. It's unable to move at all. Drag is coming up. It's going to be an Infernal Drake. So. No no jungle for the side of Ace Ventura. This is a, it's a this massive is... uh, point in the game, too. Dragon number three. This will be uh, the dragon of the game. Yeah, so Misfortune's gonna hit harder and scale harder. Uh, Kassanen's gonna hit harder, scale Flash harder. Flash dredge line on to Malkai. Malkai turns around with the ultimate in the, the. Run him down! Depth charge will land with a full channel of Misfortune all onto him. Uh, Narhop looking for the uh, ultimate misses. Beautiful Flash disengage from uh, J Rob. Dark Binding will land on a Stevo. Dredge line looking to land, but. Spell Shield is still active on the mind bottling. Lucalino looking to step up and continue the fight, but they are disengaged. Yeah. I got Which really I scared around there this for a moment. Hatch will land on AJLTL. He will have to turn back around. Dredge line turning back in. Twisted Advance onto him. Gets queued back. Uh, <laughs> but Polina able to pick up uh, Morgana there. There's just a fight by this this bush here. It's I don't think it's the fight that uh, Ace Ventura wants. Oh. I got really scared there for a moment. I thought uh, Misfortune was going to flash into them and just be instantly turned on and exploded. I don't I, uh... think that's a fight that Mad Hacker wins the bot lane either. I don't know if he should be uh, necessarily... Oh yeah, no, this is the really bad. At this point of the game. Yeah, uh, he does have Rod done. Uh... I believe he's going to be building a uh, Zanya's Hourglass with the, with the cloth armor just sitting in his inventory. <laughs> Yeah, having Zed and uh, Sivir, yeah, looking like a Seeker's Arm Guard before finishing that. Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean that is that too. is ideal. That like building Azanias into the uh, team that Ace has uh, drafted is probably ideal. They have Sivir and Zed as their main uh, damage sources, which are both uh, <clears throat> AD and only AD. They don't have any like mixed scaling or anything like that. So it it is smart that they are uh, just grabbing armor and stacking it. Baron's coming up here. They do they do have vision on the Zed. 
or they have vision on where the Zed is. Oh. Also, props to Hyaris for uh, building the Knight's Vow. Uh, every ADC is looking at you and giving you the seal of approval. Even though it's not going to save Misfortune from the Zed yet. Uh, yeah, probably Which turns not. on to the Zed here. Zed does take the depth charge, but is able to blink away and get the black shield from mind bottling there. Looks like Mad Hacker is uh, looking into the all-in. Because uh, you were able to just turn back around after the Sivaralt's popped. What am I watching? <laughs> this possible invade for this blue buff. Blue buff looking like a big, uh, big, big trophy for both teams here. It's like it will, will reset. reset. Yeah. yeah. Marcus Brownie, you moving in at Kazoo. Kazoo able to just blink away and disengage. Does not follow up because of the lack of vision. Didn't want to face check the entire enemy team. They will. They will leave the blue buff there. They will. All of that drama over blue buff, and they just didn't even do it after. It's just still on the map. Marcus Brownie taking a huge double up chunk there. Gosh, that's gross. That damage is so gross. Kazoo living inside of Mad Hacker's mind, red free. The exhaust will come out, heal, flash from Mad Hacker. The Q comes out with a flash back from Kazoo. Kazoo is able to land a dredge line, will land on a captain. Why would he a beautiful Q bandage toss, trying to escape, ignite an ultimate onto the cast in there. He will fall. And the blue buff finally will go to Ace Ventura, as it looks like here. Huge objective for Ace Ventura. Is, uh, about 10 minutes, it seems like, fighting over blue buff, finally able to grab that. Uh, Moon Delicious. Huge win there. Dredgeline will land on the Maokai. Looks like Marcus Brownie with just the horse blinders on, heading straight in for Uapolina. Able to disengage, though. Gets the peel from her team. Uh, now he's getting chased down by uh, Olaf. Uh, Deathmark might kill him here, but Heal is able to keep him alive. Beautiful heal by Lapolina. J-Rob's the only one left. Big, chonky boy. Just able to walk out in his big onesie suit. Oh my goodness, Joe. That was a fight to remember. Do you need I, to take a breather after that? I need some oxygen. Yeah, you need you need a lung extender. It's, it's like that. the fight below, there's like two skirmishes happening, and then another fight, then it just roam top into another fight. So yeah. Evo just BM <laughs> straight up ignoring the Mumu next to him. Goes to the Megan Argus, the, the health back, jumps over the wall like a god. Uh, and just walks away. Just walks away. This what man a, has balls of steel like you wouldn't actual believe. Actual Chad over here. Uh, yeah, he just, he actually just like plugged walk right out. Like, didn't even care. <laughs> still walking around with a uh, mind bottling behind him, just kind of just zero cares. Securing the second Infernal Drake of this game. We're trying to throw a Q in there, get it. Uh, I got scared. Fortune for a does second. channel there. Zed blinking in and uh, death marking on to Lapolina. Lapolina using his stopwatch just to stay alive here, flapping the flash away also. Another flash disengaged from uh, Olaf also. Nars just alone back here in the back line. We'll get turned on. Beautiful flash again, plug walking out yet again from another oh close call. Oh my god, this oh my man! God. This <laughs> man! Please, please! Touchdown. I want him to live so bad. Oh my god, he's gonna live. He's gone! He's, he's gone. gone! It's he's actually gone. the great escape flash coming off of mind bottling. He's still gone. trying to get Steve. He's gone! What the oh fuck? My god. He's so good! <laughs> he's so good! <laughs> MVP, uh, Stevo, 7600 for his game just for that play. He's so, oh. put that as a highlight reel, please. He's so good. Put him in a coffin. Uh, I believe that <laughs> just uh, DOA there for uh, Ace Ventura is having to watch this VOD back. Wow, I would, I would not want to be that Morgana there. <clears throat> Jesus. Wow. Stevo, you absolute legend of a man. What are you doing? Able to just how, how turn you... tail and shake his tail feathers with style there, Joe. It's it, wow, that was uh that was insane. Honestly.
that was the highlight of this uh this match. Probably the season. <laughs> just a season highlight, just out yeah. of all of the entire out of all the divisions. You know, we, we see stop. we see like at like skillful team fights where like uh, where AD carries just standing on the cusp of death and they're just they're just going ham. And then and then you have clips like that where through all odds he lives by by pure force of will. And honestly, that that is what I like to see more than than any well played team fight. Stevo and uh, AJTL out here in a potential like two v four collapse. Also, I want to mention Stevo doesn't have any MR there. He I he was he was fighting uh, a Mumu there, and he just wasn't getting shredded at all. Marcus Brownie gets flashed on Death Charge and Q onto him. Misfortune all will get channeled. Curse the Mummy does come out. Uh, Harris uh, does get stunned up and stared up, unstoppable on AJTL. Ignite on Harris now trying to escape. On the hunt is uh, used, so it's, uh, uh, they are able to chase him down quite easily because of it. Steve O, uh, Uo able to kite out here. Kazoo into the fight now. It looks like Captain trying to turn back in to engage, but just, just broke it, it took him down. Meganar is back up again. Go, Steve O, you man. Looking to potentially death push here now. They are not biting. Stevo does catch the dark binding here. Starts to get melted down. Jumps away. Twisted advance falls it up. Mega Nar is up. Heal goes onto him, but he still falls. Oh my goodness! <laughs> Spell shield on this for uh, on the saber there, and almost a big follow up onto the remaining members of Moon Delicious, but they're able to keep it under control. Back stop now by Kazoo. At this point, it looks like uh, Ace Ventura is trying to get a reset now. Yeah, uh, after one fight, <laughs> you would just want to reset. Uh, I don't see anything of significance coming up um, that could... Uh, Massive 724 crit on the red buff there by Miss Fortune. Oh. oh yeah, that's the stuff we like to see. Um, yeah, backing when after you win a team fight and there's not like Baron or Dragon that you can... Captain YPD potentially walking call. into some trouble here, Joe. Oh, uh, yeah. Rooted and hit by the um, dredge line there. Does about a third of his health. It's starting to get pretty tanky. Yeah, uh, he does have the uh, thorn mail. He has the Deathmark cinder on hole. The AJTL there. Doesn't do that much damage to him, having dead man's plate. Uh, on the hunt is know. used. So, Siveralt is down now. It's a huge dragon set up now for, uh... Yeah. Moon Delicious here. Could be Soul. Ace Venturis has to defend this dragon, or it could be game. Ace Venturis has, um, a, a really good, uh, advantage here because they're on red side, so it's, it's a lot easier for them to, uh, control and retake. Uh, yeah, Meganar just jumping over the wall there, though, Joe, just not caring about the wall. Uh, uh does Nar both of them there, wall, oh. but no, no Mumu now. Mind bottling, trying to, trying to peel for the team there. Just light a Q and a W, but... All right, GG. Give give Stevo MVP. Uh, yeah, that is, that's Soul now. I mean, that is Soul. So he was popped. Uh, looks like all fight for uh, Maokai here. Go in. He is caught out here. Death mark onto Ilkalina. Beautiful flash away from that all in there. It's just popping and peppering from the other side of the wall. That was a really well played flash. Dodged everything. Mad Hacker, the only one standing for the ranks of Ace Ventura, is, is leaving nobody to contest this Baron. Yeah, Baron call coming out perfectly executed. We did the same thing in our game, so that's why we're seven and one. Misfortune still has alt, and I mean, Cassidy still has sums. Nar has sums. So this is really easy, easy uh, Baron for the uh, Moon Delicious here. Uh, Mumu is coming, but no ultimate. Smite is up for him. Yeah. No smite for, uh, um, Window yeah. yeah. Just in the nick of time before Captain's oh. able to get there. Yeah. This MF is so unbelievably fed right now that it's just going to be shredded. Cassidy has a lead, so he's just going to shred people and one-bop them. 
Uh, CS Cassidy differences is... are uh, pretty even across the board. Um, Cassidy is level 16, Joe. I do believe that the game's over. Yeah. Uh, pretty, much every, pretty much every Cassidy main, when they go into game, they, uh, they have two things that they're thinking about. They're thinking, oh, you're camping me, so you're going to be dead in about 25 minutes when I hyperscale into the late game. And uh, they're like, wow, I just get chunked by every every single melee, uh, not melee champion, every AD champion. Um, but the the misplay early with uh, Zed trying to all in him early uh, was, was just not ideal. <clears throat> Flash curse the mummy coming in on that dive, but the turret will fall, ignite onto misfortune. But she is able to back up and channel the full ultimate now. Uh, Twist advance onto misfortune, redemption coming down. Nar coming out, redemption will kill the misfortune. Uh, it's just a uh, Maokai here now. And that is the ace for uh, Luna Lit. the ace, and that's pretty much GG here. I mean, Ace Ventura is living up to their name by getting aced here. Uh, <laughs> wow. It looks that like was, uh, that was so low brow. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> it's actually over, so... Um, um, it is actually over, and that no one to defend did for these, kill her. You know, no one to defend <laughs> for these two Nexus turrets. Uh, it looks like it's a clean, easy sweep for Moodalicious, getting their one win needed to to clinch their, their second place. The Nexus will fall, and just like that, in week five, uh, Moodalicious will move up to four and three. Oh, so that is GG. Wow. That was a, a really well-played game by a, a Delicious. Alright. Let, let's see these damage graphs. You doing the NFL theme? We're not we're not sponsored though. No, no, that's the song. That's the one song. It's I not, don't know what song you're that's talking the song. about. It's from the War Songs album. Okay, we'll we'll find it. We'll find so it. So you know the song. Uh, I'll play it and you'll go, Oh, it's that song. Yeah, and I'll probably be like, Wow, I hate that song. <laughs> no, you like that song. <laughs> um so looking at damage graphs, uh Misfortune and Zed were just pumping out the deeps. Uh Nar getting a sizable chunk of damage in there as well. Um, and Maokai, the top laner is actually kind of doing yeah. quite a bit of damage there. Yeah, but I, I, I think they they were the damage graph was just hyperinflated for them because they're both playing tanks and they're like, oh, uh, we'll just hit each other until something wins. That's the Charlie Dimestra school of thought. And if it doesn't work out for me, I'll just flame everybody else. Yeah, <laughs> regardless exactly. of if I know what's actually happening. All right, so uh, I believe we're going to take about a five-minute break. Uh, Wait, let the uh, teams rethink their strategies. On the game. Yeah, I'm going to hydrate and uh, uh, go through stats with Adder, and we'll see you guys in about five minutes. Stay right there. Be back.
Good evening, everybody, and welcome back to the Casually Spurs Amateur League. We are in game two for the Demasi division between Mundo Licious and Ace Venturas. I am Death Adder, and with me, as always, is uh, Joe Killera. Hello there. I'm going to be your color caster for game two again. Uh... Heck yeah, there he is. <laughs> <laughs> There he is, everybody. Look at him. <laughs> All right. So what, are we, what kind of improvements do we need to see out of Ace Ventura's? <laughs> what kind of... Okay. Why is it so funny? Just there he is. Look at him. It's like it's like I'm an, it's like I'm a circus clown. Just look at him. <laughs> it's like, it's like a, come on, man. It's like a sideshow attraction. Yeah. <laughs> All right, all right, <laughs> all right. So Ace Ventura is looking to maybe make some adjustments. Uh, I'm guessing Misfortune's gonna be banned this oh, game. Oh yeah, 100. Uh, she popped off last game. We're probably gonna see a Nar ban as well. Uh, we're probably gonna see an Olaf ban, perhaps. Um, and probably a Nautilus too. I'm surprised Nautilus got to repick ban phase because Nautilus is such a disgusting champion. Uh, early game. He really is, especially with that Q rework, able to hit anything in a general direction on the map. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's, yeah, bad and gross. Bad and gross. Gross and bad. I believe we are going to be hopping into pick ban, uh, very shortly. Uh, Moonalicious did lose, uh, two bans. Uh, because of Kazoo being a, uh, a two divisions higher or or like a, a division and a half higher than their normal mid laner um yeah he's a division higher right okay yeah. um i don't like to get into the rules too much um the casual esports amateur gods just sent me down the information that they uh, will be receiving two bands this game because when was uh, uh they were naughty summoners and could not make a full lineup <laughs> week five so it will be slapped on the wrist twice for each game in uh in response to that for a total of four slaps four slaps uh and those slaps will be hitting different um for each band and pick phase joe yeah um yeah it really puts moon delicious in a in an awkward position they still won so congratulations to them don't even need bands. Yeah, don't even need bands. And honestly, that's where it's slap. Okay, okay, Ace Venturas. I want to see a Nautilus ban. I want to see. Okay, they're banning Caitlyn. All right. Okay, never mind. Uh, I want to. I want to see uh, a Nautilus ban. I want to see a Misfortune ban. That's what I want to see. I do not want you guys to go up against the hell that is Nautilus Misfortune. Yeah, I believe they have a little bit more flex on their 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 bands for having the first pick. If they, I'm guessing if uh, Ace Ventura is, uh, I think what they're gonna do is see if Moon Delicious will ban with that that third band that they're that they're allotted. Uh, if they don't ban Misfortune with the third band, I do believe Ace Ventura's will will pick Misfortune. I think they're trying to force Moon Delicious's hand into into banning Misfortune. Ooh, that could that could be a strategy. But if they don't uh, and they don't pick Misfortune, then, then what's going to happen? Ace Ventura's uh, they're banning the pretty much the same comp uh, that they banned last game. So uh, <clears throat> maybe there are priority targets that they just don't want Moon Delicious uh, on. Um. Katarina, Caitlyn, uh, not something that I particularly think of as pick ban, um, but but maybe because of Ace Ventura's uh, ch uh, champion pool, they don't really have anything that um, really counters it. But I I know that isn't correct because they played um, they played Amumu, they played uh, Maokai. Uh, things with CC that just hard counter Caitlyn and Katarina. So. Yeah, Malphite coming out. Three centuries as well. 
Now it's the question of will Moon Delicious ban uh, Misfortune? Looks like they will ban Cho'Gath, unless we're going to see a first pick Misfortune for Ace Ventura. Yeah. Uh, if they don't pick a, uh, Misfortune here first, uh, they're they, kind of trolling. They so picked Vagar, so. They picked Vigar first. Uh, got that late game scaling uh, comp already in the works. Uh, we're probably going to see a, a, a Nautilus Misfortune again. I, I, mean, I, don't, I don't see why you wouldn't. Yeah, I mean, it worked so well. Moon Delicious taking their sweet time. Looks like they'll go for a Thresh. Thresh. So we, we are seeing Thresh instead of a Nautilus, <laughs> but can still, uh, I mean, a Nautilus Thresh, or a Thresh hook into, like, Flay Box can still have a similar effect of an all-in as Nautilus with a Misfortune. Yeah. So... Would be interesting. All right, so it seems that we have a mulligan on our hands, lads. Yeah, it yeah, seems that we're gonna have a bit. mulligan. Yeah. Uh, it seems that Vane is going to be switched out for the uh volley bear. Okay. So yeah. So the volley bear was actually supposed to be a Vane there. And yeah. Yeah, we're remaking. Um, uh, the the picks that they they. Looks like we'll go up to the Vagar lock-in. Yeah. And then it's gonna be Vein Thresh, so. We'll have Vein Thresh and after that it will be back to Ace Ventura's. Well, that's alright. Uh, uh, a mulligan is uh, not something we're, you know, we're afraid of. Or not that. completely uncommon with pro draft. Yeah. Sometimes pro draft uh, can be a little... A little bit buggy, but that's anything League of Legends nowadays. <clears throat> well, let's see if they can get it on the second try here. Yo, what do you think about uh, the idea of bringing back the pink ward? Please, please give me back pink wards and make it work with the collie shroud. Sincerely, everybody. I liked it when I, I could play mid lane and then a collie would throw down her shroud and I'd just be like, bonk, pink ward. And what, what, what was she gonna do? Even though control wards on paper are actually better, Joe. Yeah, but they don't reveal. The, since the introduction of uh, camouflage and true invisibility, um, you know, it's it's the it's kind of they, they reveal, don't they? They reveal, they reveal an area camouflage, around. not true stealth. Oh yeah, they only make true stealth stuff that like they they silhouette it, they like soft reveal it. They don't make it target. Yeah, it's bad. I feel like if I see a shimmer, I should be able to click it. I want to click the shimmers. I have a gun. My gun isn't, like, something that needs to be locked on. It's not like a javelin. Hey, man, before shimmer, it was, like, awful, though. Oh, yeah. The, yeah, it was bad. Because you'd, like, hit someone, and, like, you know you'd hit them, and then, like, you just, like, have to guess which way they're going from it. Yeah. Shimmer actually makes it so much better. 
and rewarding for hitting an invisible unit. Oh, yeah, 100%. Even though I do feel bad for, like, invisible units going against, like, Brand and, like, Teemo, where they're just, like, constantly shimmered from, like, a, a, a damage a over dot, time ability. Yeah. yeah. Dot's kind of really... Alright, so, same bands up to this point. We're going to see the... What was it? Chogath, yes. <clears throat> now we should see Vagar and Vayne Thresh here. Yep, Vagar, Vayne Thresh, and then Senna Mumu, perhaps. Honestly, Vein Thrush, um, just blind picked, isn't that great of a uh, bot lane, in my opinion. I don't think that uh, blind picking Vein into a, uh, a, a Vigar and like having other things on the table isn't the best idea. She can be um, hard countered by Draven, Senna, Aphelios. Pretty, pretty much anything that outranges her or out damages her early. Uh, Twitch can actually beat out a vein if it's played correctly. So, uh, so Senna being picked up is uh, quite disastrous uh, for for the delicious and their bot lane. Uh, that could be a Senna support. If it's a support, that's even worse because it, uh, Senna support got buffed with her. Uh, her uh, soul drop and her her souls give her one to one AD, uh, gives her more range. It gives her crit chance and it gives her life steal as well. So, uh, Senna being buffed in that capacity is is extremely broken, and the two hundred years of game dev experience are, is just dripping with that champion. Olaf being banned out, Orn being uh, banned as well. Uh, no ban coming out. Okay. All right. Morgana being banned. I misspoke there. I misread the uh, the ban tool. Adder, what what do you uh, what do you say about this? Well, as of right now, I mean. <clears throat> We're seeing a shed top most likely there. Um, looks like Gundelicious is gonna have uh, a little bit better of macro play for the for the bot lane early after six. Um, depending on what their jungler is here, having a like a Rek'Sai or something like that would uh, synergize really well with the team. Zidzao, um, not bad, able to jump onto people and utilize that Shen ult. Same with Thresh, able to Q onto people and utilize that Shen ult to get people close to taunt. Um, having having Thresh Lantern plus the Shen 2 and having Sin Zhao, uh just allowing people to get on top of Teeth with Stick and Shen allowing them to stick longer. Um, really Ooh, that is a of, Maokai support! A lot of target access for that vein, but at the same time, I mean, we're seeing a, a bunch of CC now for, for Ace Venturas. Uh, having the Mumu and Maokai Having the Vagar cage instead of W, uh, would be a lot to work around for Vayne here. Um, I like this. Lane. I really, really like this. It's a massive scaling team for uh, Moon Delicious, though. Having unlimited Thresh Souls, having Vayne late game, unlimited Swain Flock stacks, whereas you have Senna and Vagar stacking, so. Yeah, so. Really this, endless this, scaling on each side. Yeah, this game's gonna go late game if I. If uh, something doesn't happen uh, early, um, Senna with the Maokai is going to be so unbelievably gross. Uh, you would have the Maokai Twist Advance, which is a point and click CC ability because because reasons. And then we have the Senna W, which is basically a Mar an AOE Morgana binding, which is unbelievably gross. 
Um, so if Vayne doesn't use her tumble correctly or doesn't respect their CC chain, she will get chunked or even one shot early. Just CC'd to death, and that is the worst way to go. You know what I like to say, Joe? CC is damage, and damage is CC. Oh, yes. And then and then run away. Now we run. Yeah. Uh, honestly, that is... That is like Sun Tzu level... Uh, you know, art of war, going... Just to know your enemy, you must... CC them and then run away because you baited your jungler into a fight that you cannot win. It's times like that when you realize that League of Legends is a fun game. Yeah. Alright, first dragon who? First dragon is going to be an ocean dragon, and I'm going to say it's still going to go to the Ace Ventura, so the exact same guess as last time. I'll say it's a mountain drake, and I'm going to say it's going to go to Mundo, because I think Mundolicious, or anybody that has a uh, red side, uh, will be able to just J-chill and grab a dragon early. Um, it does come down to bot lane, though, so if... So if, um... Uh, Mundelicious loses bot lane early, then it's 100% going to aced. But other than that, um, I don't, I don't really see uh, Ace Venture is getting it early. Yeah, I, I, I can see that. They both have, like, the potential to get an early dragon. Yeah, they, bo they both have, like, hook champions where they can, where they can get a pick, and then... Zin, Zin, uh, Zin's pretty good at taking early dragons. Yeah. So, I, uh, honestly, I'd like to see Zin Zhao start blue side. Yeah, you could rubber band back to dragon yeah. that way. And, once again, Moondelicious uh, has another client uh, crash, so... We're gonna J chill here for a moment while I cry my eyes out and this game gets delayed by another seven minutes. I shall return in a moment. Yeah, we'll be right back everyone.
All right, everybody, we are just waiting for the spectator delay. Uh, sorry again about technical difficulties. Uh, it seems like uh, we're having just issues with the client and the uh, people just kind of bugging out. We've managed to make our way past that, so game two is going to be here shortly. Um, we're seeing two teleports on the side of um, Mundo Licious, uh, plus a, a Shen alt. So they'll be able to get around the map a lot more frequently than Ace Ventura is, whereas Ace Ventura does have a combat sum in the top lane with gank. Or, I mean, a combat sum in the mid lane with gangplank compared to uh, Twain there, so. We could see that affect the early game. <clears throat> I will say Hello. that. Uh, <laughs> oh, there you are, Joe. I will Hi. say that uh, the the bot lane matchup, depending on uh, how it plays out, could go either way. Really, I mean, an early game hook would be devastating for for Ace Ventura's, whereas. Uh, an early game cage would be pretty bad. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, they both just kind of have that, like, land the CC all in kind of bot lane for the most part. So. Oh, it's a Vigar. Okay. All right. It's a Vigar AD, APC. All right. Well, that's going to be interesting. Um,. In in that case, I wanna I wanna say they uh they being Moondelicious have a um a higher chance of winning bot lane. You have on the side of Ace Ventura, so you have two uh low mobility uh hyperscalers while you have Thresh and Vayne, which can both run down Vigar and Senna, so. Um, and and Moodalicious bot lane should have Pryo in the majority of the lane because of the the pushing power of Vayne is is more um consistent than Vigar and uh Thresh can just constantly pressure. I agree with you there, Joe. I mean, lore-wise, Thresh kind of wants to get Senna back in the Lantern, too, so we could see that come into play. Yeah. We all we all want Senna back in the Lantern, because Jesus Christ, this champion is broken. Can we put a Felios in the Lantern, too, and, like, <laughs> some other champions, too? Yeah, can we put Diana, Felios, and Senna back in the Lantern, like, please? Misfortune in the Lantern for now? Mm -hmm. Maybe, like, Maybe Olaf could be in the lantern, do more fashions, Nemo in the lantern, and then throw the lantern away. Thresh mm -hmm. just doesn't have a W anymore. Um, I mean the options are endless, Joe. We could give we could give Thresh like a flashlight instead, make him more Luigi's Mansion esque. Mm. I like that. Maybe instead of him having his hook, he's just got a vacuum, and he kind of zucks you to him. <laughs> All right. Hits you with the big zuck. I don't Game know. one is starting, so let's get ready. Get ready to rumble here. Mm. Grasp of the undying on uh, Gangplank there, where we have Dark Harvest and Glacial Augment in the bot lane for Senna Vagar. Early game five point uh, layout coming on the side of Moon Delicious. Masaki! Oh, actually, I misspeak. They're going for a uh, five, like a, a three point defense top side. So. Very interesting there. J Rob spotted out. Does see Kazoo there and, and AJ. Everyone's just kind of J chilling. Minions have spawned. 
both sides just saying, hey, what's up, my guy? And the Fiesta has begun for game two, Joe. They will have to start the blue here. Mm -hmm. uh, looks like a Muma will start topside, so we will see uh, maybe some inverted uh, horizontal jungling here. Honestly, I would love to see that. Looks like uh, Zin Will's head towards the bot tribush. We might actually see this horizontal jungle, or possibly just like a level two gank in the bot lane. Uh, he is just Che chilling there. Yeah. So Thresh is going to walk up and go the for it. Lands on a Vagar there, knock up Flash, Ignite Heal will go out onto him, not able to pick him up. AJ TL is taking two tower shots here, Sending just one Flash auto wave, but cannot get the oh. animation off in time. The animation is cancelled. Might have bought a bit, bit off a little bit more than she could chew here. Both teams getting extremely low, AJ TL having to reset there. Yeah, that was actually so unlucky for... Um... Mind botting because of Senna having one of the highest attack windups in the game. She wasn't able to uh, secure the flash auto. Level 2 advantage will go to uh, Moon Delicious. No and let me. Let me pull up the, uh... <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't know if you noticed that, Joe, but the host oh, just I, I the, didn't. Yeah, Shadow just pointed out, you know, that Vayne doesn't have items. Luckily, I just forgetting to buy here, I think. Uh, oh, wow. Okay. Uh, that puts a lot of things in perspective. I'm making, it's starting to make me feel like, uh, Mad Hacker wasn't just so lucky that he survived that level 2 kink. It's more or less that he got away with, like, 14 HP because Vayne just doesn't have Doran's blade. Well, that is a uh, unfortunate uh, misplay, but hindsight is a powerful thing, Joe. And it hindsight, your... hindsight really is, and, and honestly, yeah, we need we need a lot more of that. No heal in the bot lane for the side of uh, Moon Delicious. Vayne opted to go barrier. Yeah, I'd like to see here is uh, position himself a little more aggressively in that push. Froze isn't like that. Yeah, 100%. Uh, is hook does come out. take the hook, though. I mean, Amumu was be uh, behind there, so it's probably really smart for him to, to yeah. not actually take I the engage. I don't believe they had vision on him there, so... Flash and gonna have to eat an orange there in the mid lane. Gank by HTL. Lots of uh, premonition coming out from um, Hyaris. <clears throat> Could be a skirmish in the jungle here. HATL looking for the Amumu. They're getting deep vision. Dragon does come up. Priority for the Ace Venturas, but looking to possibly get another gank here by AJTL. Just directly behind them all. Senna's uh, W will land and he's in the cage. He's in the stunning. rage cage, not able to uh, secure the Flash third auto attack. Flash coming out by Harris here, Flay's mind bottle behind, Ignite will go on onto her hook, does land Flash coming out by Captain though, looking to counter back by onto AJTL, he's getting incredibly low, able to just barely save their boy now. That is That's so troll, right this there. is so troll, how is Vayne getting first blood with no items? <laughs> It is, it is actually so troll that she was able to secure first blood with no items. <laughs> what is Moonalicious trying to prove here, Joe? Uh, I think, I honestly, this is some like next level. Okay, there's two things. She was either super forgetful and just forgot to buy items, or 
he was just so confident that he could win bot lane with no items. Yeah, he didn't even buy a start item, Joe. He just got Billswater and a dagger. Just yeah. full send. So, so, so he is either extremely cocky or extremely forgetful. Maybe a little bit of both. Maybe. Sounds like you, Joe. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> a little forgetful, kind of cocky, but you know, he, he's an ADC, so. Yeah, I mean, I, I never forget to buy items. I, items are what drive me forward. But uh, Vayne with two daggers, Bilgewater Cutlass is uh, a very significant jump in power. Um, we're probably going to see trades. Uh, Mind bottling, looking for a roam here, does land the W. Snare onto the Kazoo. Kazoo does all. Channel coming on to an AJTL with a return gank. The uh, Marcus Brownie might take off more than two and Mind bottling turned around, flashing all from Kazoo. Oh, that was really well played. All four Moonalicious just. Full control of tempo right now. Dragon is up with nothing to contest it, Joe. Yeah, so this this is a Cloud Drake that's just <clears throat> to the side of uh, Moon Delicious now. This is this is the freest freebie that's ever been freed. Xin Zhao pinging that his chilling, chilling smite is ready. Uh, uh, the cannon barrage was used mid lane, so easy clap. Being able to tumble there and get some poke damage onto the Vagar. Huge experience advantage for uh, Moon Delicious in the bot lane right now. Oh, yeah. Mind bottling caught out again. The knockup does land. That will be it for, for mind bottling. Ayaris doing the Eastern special where he steals all the kills. Yeah, Thresh having that empowered flay really does. Uh, when you're in the moment, you do not think that you're gonna auto somebody for like 200 damage, no. but you will. You will, and Ooh, then Vayne your ADC will cry. In the cage here. Takes the damage and walks away. Vagar not scaled up enough. Marcus Brownie though coming down with a beautiful roam, condemned into the wall. A uh, bandage toss will land on a thresh here. Was peeled away by uh, the Zim Zhao all. Hook going ooh, almost landing on a hacker there. AJTL will take a W. Page, Stevo, and J Rob in the pillow fight that's toppling the meanwhile. W will land on Hayares, getting a little cut out. No mana on Hayares. Ignite will go on to Marcus Brownie. Utopia will pop final hour. Vagar's ult will come out popping our boy Thresh here. Oh man, <laughs> Zin's down. It's just Vayne alone here condemning a uh, gangplank. Just trying to get him low enough. Ignite goes out on her. Barrier's oh. not enough. Kazoo in the back line here trying to clean up with ultimate. It's able to pick up the gangplank and is running down mind bottling now with the ultimate. Able to Q and pop the all and grab the two back for Moonalicious there. Yeah, really well played by Kazoo. Is everybody trickling into the bot lane in that fight? Yeah. Oh, Honest. caught another one with a never move in Q. Now he's looking to just auto down uh, Captain Wife DP here. Well, this game is uh, going to be dictated by Kazoo now. He is 5 and 0 on Swain. The fact that Swain does. Doesn't necessarily scale until about two or three items, and the fact that he has five kills already, he's about to go and probably, he's yeah, he's got a lot of ages. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So at this point, every minute that goes by, Swain just becomes that much more strong and that much harder to kill. So yeah, and Swain on his own is already hard to kill early game as it is, but now it's going to be even harder. Jesus. Silver Ooh, that... Bolt Brock really yeah. showing through with that big damage. Yeah. yeah I believe uh... I can click onto a kazoo, yeah. Um, he's got 15 flock stacks right now, so 75 bonus health. The death sentence Ooh, will land play, and death. the box comes out. Senna will go back into the lantern. Yeah. So, it is, uh, so I am correct. Uh, Vayne is maxing W, so every three procs, she is going to chunk you for, uh, what is it? Uh, uh, 11.5 plus the 11.5 max percent HP plus the how much is it? 8%. So she's chunking you for 19.5% of your max HP. 
which is totally fine. Yeah, which is it, it's only it's only twenty percent of your max HP every three autos. It's not that bad. Bork and uh, Q coming down, condemned away. A curse of the mummy landing on nobody there. Oh, Captain, beautiful hook by here and the lantern for uh, for our boy Polina there, just instantly blowing up Senna and putting her back in the lantern once again. Just... Looks like it's a bit of an ape escape here, and the zoo uh, keeper is Thresh, just trying to get these monkeys back in the cage. Um, J Rob getting the 2v1 here, but he's a, he's a thick boy, so he's not going to fall easily to the to the gank. <clears throat> Ooh, final hour comes out, and they look to dive, but a beautiful cage. I think there's a turnaround here from uh, J Rob trying to stop the siege. God, she is so tanky. Siege is to... just a man on a mission, not willing to go down without a fight, and he he will tank that tower, and he will he will one v one you under the tower. It doesn't matter. Cannon barrage will come out to save top tower. Bandage toss onto the Shen. Shen able to dash away. Ooh, AJTL will be stuck in there with the blast. Scene. Trying to... Ooh, flash it away there. The bandage toss. Beautiful flash into the wall oh. by J-Rob. Um, <laughs> oh. Oh. So you're getting another favorable trade uh, with the phase rush. Uh, that is the certified NA flash coming up by J-Rob. Uh... Sivo almost killed uh, AJTL. Wait, is uh, Captain gonna die to the blue buff? Oh my god, he got still close to dying. Wow. Yeah, he is like 1 HP. He's like, yeah, he's like, he's at like 120 now, but before, when he first started channeling, I believe he was like, like at like a 80 something HP. Like one more blue buff auto, he probably would have died. Yeah, that was uh, very scary. Jesus. Oh. Just landing those never moves. Uh, He's actually he popping off stacks. so yeah. hard. How many, yeah. how many flock stacks do our boy Kazoo have in the mid lane now? He has... Uh, 21, see. so 105 bonus health from that passive of Ravidus flock. Jesus. Are you looking at pre pretty much a ruby crystal? Yeah. Just for free. 400 uh, gold worth of HP that he just has gained passively, which is always fun to see. And we also have passive on uh, Thresh here. I mean, Thresh already has 23 souls, so he's got a bonus 17 armor and AP. So realistically, he's got like a, he's like a solid six 600 gold worth of stats for free. Yeah. Oh, Lord, they start the dragon with the arrows in there. He's going to have to get out the splash damage on Mountain Dragon. It's pretty big. Yeah. that That's one thing uh, most teams don't estimate is the... Tiamat proc on the dragon autos of uh, Mountain and uh, Infernal. They 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 chunk and they hurt a lot. Uh, they hurt they hurt so so much. Yeah, it's a it can really shred a lot of damage across the team if everyone's grouped together in those fights. Twisted advance coming out by J Rob here, queuing him into his little kitty boy in the in the bush. We see Ignite go out on Elopina. Having used final hour to catch out, uh, catch out the old <coughs> gank Marcus lane, Brown. and they'll yeah. start the dragon. Uh, Marcus Brownlee did use everything, uh, all of his summoners. J Rob peppering Sivo down low, but unable to get the kill. Never move landing on to Captain YPD here. He's going to have to use Curse of the Mummy just to stay alive. Here is, we'll get hit with a W and a Banish Toss. Hooks the, the Mumu and, and hits him with a box with the Ignite. Just low enough for Bane to come in and grab the kill. Yeah, AJTL able to grab Senna, but that is the definition happened. of a spoon-fed kill. Because wow, 
Uh, Vayne literally had to do nothing to, to grab that kill. Honestly, it should have been a solo kill. It should have been a solo kill for Iris. And, and that just goes to show how far behind uh, Ace Ventura is. Coming out from Gazoo, looking to chase down uh, Mark S. Brownie. Able to pick him up. J Rob almost being like a Xevo here, but Xevo just too much of a thick boy. GP does uh, need to invest in some uh, magic resist into, uh, into Moodalicious. TPing back in the lane, Stevo does re-engage on the J Rob here. J Rob gonna have to back up after that reset and buy. Uh Stevo should be able to secure the uh top lane uh tower. Another turret down, the outer bit turret will fall. It's past 14 minutes, uh all the um tier one plating is gone now, so Tier 1 towers are just going to drop like, uh, like nothing. Kazoo finding Captain YPD here. Kazoo is just so far ahead that he could probably face tank all three of them and still Kazoo live. Body and like three people right now. Yeah, and they are all terrified of this bird man. Vayne does opt to get a QSS early. Uh, we have seven stacks of Rod of Ages onto the um, Swain. Uh, we have a full item on Chen with uh, Tier 2 Boots. We have Righteous Glory on the Thresh. So in a team fight, we can expect him to just pop that and run Mach 5 into the enemy team, get a flay into a box, and then Vayne just mops up. Ooh, Mad Hacker kind of uh, caught out here. Flash and Righteous coming out. Box coming out as well. Philippine able to just pick it. that up. Kazoo grabbing at the captain here. Almost able to pick up the Amumu again. Richard is out for uh, one delicious here. Sieging the inner. Uh, Spot and mid lane turret. They will engage on a Mark Ash Brownie here. Mark Ash Brownie does eat as a uh, orange with Moose Kirby trying to get back, but it's not enough. Twisted Advance coming out on the bot lane and Ignite onto a Mumu. Trying to engage onto them for diving here as tanking a few shots, but not a final hour onto a uh, Vayne trying to pepper down on this uh, Maokai. Maokai just actually a tanky boy. Though. Uh, wow, Vayne he actually just kill has has to pop barrier. Twisted Advance comes out, able to outplay oh. the Vayne with a big old Twisted Advance. Nothing like pressing W on an enemy and saying, I'm untargetable and you're dead. Yeah. Truly nothing like uh, the 300 IQ outplay by Riot of point and click CC. There's the taunt dive onto the Vagar. Oh, and the Senna ulti oh. stopping the Shen uh, channel to save Zin. It's nice yeah. to see that the uh, that J Rob was able to to get uh, Lapolina there. Just just a small victory for Ace Ventura to say, you know, we did something this game. Remember when I twisted advanced Vayne? That's what J Rob's gonna be saying ten mm. years from now. So remember that one week five game when I hit that twisted advance? Yeah. Honestly, that should be a highlight as well. Highlight of a life, not necessarily just the game. Not everybody gets to live to see a, a day where they they kill Vayne with Twisted Advance. That is uh, always fun to see. The Swain ult does come out here. Not able he to grab the never just, move onto... Uh... He is just bodying them, taking zero damage. Doesn't have a care in the world. Does get taken down. Both tanks for Ace Ventura's uh, topside towards Baron. Only Senna here to try to answer the siege from here as in La Polina. One hook or one bad condemn and Senna could easily be dove. 
Big Sin's gonna just solo the dragon here. This will be dragon number three for Moon Delicious. Sana starting to get some damage finally. Umbral Glaive actually uh, giving her a bit of a power spike. Captain YPD caught out again. Cannon Barrage will come out to try to heal for him. Trying to tank the Shen and the Zin. Just to, the level behind both of them just falls. Uh, now it's just uh, Mark Ass Brownie trying to, to hold off the other the two of them. Let's get smited and slowed. Siege will continue in the bot lane here, just trying to get that tower. Malkyle does come out, catching the Shen here. Twist advance onto him, will come out as well. Barrel combo does hit him. W and Ignite onto Shen. Shen will finally fall like the oh. raid boss he is. Yeah, he is unbelievably they tanked. Committed. They've all committed to the jungle now, and now they're getting caught out. And gonna pay the price. Yeah, here comes the Righteous Glory onto the team, and the cage comes out to try to slow the fight. Swain is ulted and Vayne is ulted. Twist is advanced. Uh, Lepolina trying to kite away from this Malkai. Getting really low. W and the alt popping onto Amumu. Getting him about half health. Another cage landed by Mad Hacker. But the damage is not enough to stop them or sway them away from the siege. Yeah, that was uh, really unfortunate. By, Looks like uh, they're pinging the, the inner side turrets. Yeah, so I, yeah uh, I believe they're going to just run it up or, or just have side lanes push now after um, after resetting here. I mean, this Bane does pick up her range on. blade, so she is at her two item power split. She is going to be hurting real fast. I mean, the, ba the Baron's free, Joe. I mean, if yeah, this was the, right the Baron now, is free as well. I'd be resetting going to Baron. I'd be resetting, putting some vision on the top side jungle, or yeah. the bot side jungle. For them, at least. Yeah, just going to Baron. The, yeah, the I, I, would, jungle I would also. Boarded and do Baron. Or contest I, I, it. I would 100% them... agree with you, and I think that's what they're doing. They just need to draw them to the Baron, or draw them off the base, and just yeah, turn the fight. Yeah, they're already bot side, so... I mean, if it's just a Moo Moo, they can just ignore him and just keep fighting with the, the Baron. Well, four members sighted in the bot lane. Here is just able to... Just own them off. So might able to get past that, uh, that all. Flashing through the box, uh, still slowed by it though. Oh, Good he is by bodying. Him. He had three people on him, and he was just tanking <clears throat> all of them. Jesus. Absolute you know, madman Kazoo. Able to pick up Marcus, Brownie, and Kazoo, just a literal raid boss. Unable to fall to three people, laying another never move into a queue and in the top lane and side lane siege just like they were pinging a minute ago joe it's coming to fruition baron is down there's only one member on ace ventura's to answer to this split siege and he is cannot see through the anger and is stuck in the in the turret or in the fountain for uh yeah 100 ace ventura Turrets are falling on the bot and the left side, or in the, in the top side of the map. Double stun on the <clears throat> Kazoo getting a little bit low, but not dangerous. Mid lane inhibitor does come back, but they're here to just burn it back down again. Hook lands on to Captain Y DP, but he's able to just walk away. This might be a final siege here. It looks like uh, Windalicious looking to push for the end. Yep. Uh, this is GG, and I believe it's Mundalicious going up to first place in the uh, Demacian division now. The box does come out on a J-Rob here. Vayne will fall here. Uh, Primordial Burst will land onto him. Vagar's ignited, though. It will fall down as well. Uh, Swain alt is out. Uh, is caught under the tower, he's taking quite a bit. Now Zin swapping that uh, aggro. It is just the big boy J Rob himself and Senna trying to hold off this team. Senna explodes like like a bubble, just pops instantly. J, J, J Rob, Rob just, is just actually just doesn't guys. die. I mean, just gets the sap magic of the Q out. 
finally falls down. The pillow fight in Nexus will fall. Mundalicious has done it. They have they have flexed as hard as they could possibly flex against Ace Ventura as they will take this 2-0, leaving them at a final of 5-3 and three in the division, Joe, which means they are technically sitting in first place with the Damasi yeah. right now. Yeah, as, as of right now, they are first place. Mundalicious, GG. My goodness. Oh, so, what a series. What a series. Just a bunch of crazy stuff happened like, in, the, in those two games. Yeah, what a... I feel, like I, I feel like I just got out of like a two and a half hour fever dream. Yeah, that was a uh, nutty nut, must say. Uh, I, I believe we're, we're... Are we going to do a post-game interview? Yeah, we can we can do a post game interview. Yeah, um, I believe I believe you have questions like, lined up. Gosh, what do we say? Stevo and in Hieras or Stevo yeah, and Kazoo? Yeah, I, I feel I feel like Stevo and and Kazoo were like the highlight of. Yeah, let's see uh, if we can get Stevo and Kazoo in there. Because I I just wanna I just wanna see, uh. I, I just want to talk to Steve-O and see what was going through his head. O like, honestly. Yeah, I'm going to move up to the post-game interview thingy. Or, or should we just use the, the, the pro play chat because we're going to have five of us. Or is, is Shadow? Uh, no, I, Shadow's I, here. Shadow's yeah, here. Shadow, yeah, Shadow's He's here. He's got god powers. He does have the god powers. Joe's got to find it. He reads slow. There There's he is. The God powers. No, that's fine. Joe, I need to get or Shadow and Joe. We need to. I feel like uh, that. Uh, what did you think about what I sent you? The post game interview questions, just kind of reference thing. Uh, yeah. say, I feel like I want to like get that and like s somehow send it to the, to everybody. We can just or put it on like it a available. Google Doc yeah, or something. Yeah, have it available in a doc or something. I don't know. I'm not saying everyone has to use the. We can make like a flowchart. We can make like, like a flowchart. Sounds well, good. like I I feel like just like the bullet point setup that I have is pretty pretty general because it leaves it pretty free and open to the interviewer. It just kind of leaves the general like of what you want. <laughs> That's cool. so I'm like, where the heck? Where the hell? Yeah. Put it somewhere. Yeah. I sent it to Shadow. I can that our DM. There it is right there. <clears throat> yeah, that game was intense. Yeah, that was a uh, pretty good game. There's a bunch of really cool parts, and there's a bunch of really funny Oonga Boonga parts at the same time, too. <laughs> yeah, so that, really just... yeah, that's Demacia. Dude, okay. that's fine. Harris made a bunch of really good plays. Yeah. I just really want to talk to Steve-O, too. I yeah, just want to ask I want, him how I good it feels. I want so much. I want, I want him to ask him how good it feels to just, like, yeah, out, run, get, run away from people and make it, make it out alive. Yes. Oh, wow. That was uh, pretty pretty nuts. What's up, guys? Hello. How's it going? Good, good, man. Congratulations on the win, on the wins, I should say. Thank you. Yeah, Currently that was uh... clutching the 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 Demasi division now. That was the whole plan, man. We worked on some stuff. We changed it up a little bit. Um, we knew we were already messing up before, and Ace helped us fix it. Yeah. Well, um, just to guess a few questions here. Uh, well, like, what were like some of the really, really big like high points? Like, like with like these big team fights, um, you guys able to pick up the misfortune and uh, able to like, get the Nautilus and. Uh, these all ins are are these all just kind of like spare the moment catching people out or this uh, was it more slow and methodical and more planned? Like, um, a lot of it was planned, 
But if we saw something in that first game, uh, we this team in general has not played with Kazoo yet. Like I played with them before in my other teams, and this is my first my first game going actually support. Mm-hmm. So uh, it was partially planned, but in that first game, we went a little over aggressive on a lot of things, and we had to take a step back, and that's what we tried to do for game two. Yeah, it, it looks like it definitely worked out for you. Um, in the in the second game, we noticed uh, Lapolina didn't didn't start with any items. Was that uh, no? That was not intentional. We were kind of he... mad about it too. All right. Well, it looks like it worked out for him. Yeah, it looks like that Vagar might have not lived in that first trade where he got away. If you know, he would have he would have had a the extra eight damage or nine damage from the few autos Vayne had. That is exactly Lawrence what blade. But uh, hindsight is a powerful thing. Um, I guess other than that, the the thresh plays you had, uh, like placing these hooks and throwing down the lantern behind you, beautiful place boxes, flash flays, being basically anything you'd want to see out of a spicy thresh. Um, uh, have you been working on thresh personally? Um, well, or is this a champion before, that you naturally click with? It's before I was a top main or mid main. I w- I tended to play a lot of support, so thresh was my go to. So now that I'm back into the support, we played a couple of practice games be- earlier today to see how things went. And uh, you all wanted the Thresh. I'm like, all right, I'll pop it out. Very nice. I'm a avid Thresh player myself, so I, I like I know what I I know what I see when it's good stuff, and it was good stuff that I was seeing. So yeah, very well played. yeah, that was, that made me uh, proud yeah, you, to watch. You pretty much hand fed. Uh, that kill in the bot lane to, to Vayne. Like, she just walked up and audited him the one time. You, oh, I know. You, like, 1v1 there. <laughs> pretty much. The, the Amumu, I think. Yeah, you, yeah. like, pretty much could solo kill the Amumu, so that's how far ahead you guys were. Um, Joe, you want to ask any, some questions here? I'm just kind of... Uh, uh, what was going on when Steve-O just madman ran away from everybody there? Man, we thought he was dead. Yeah, like, we thought... Me and Adder thought he was dead for like the longest time, but every every time he just ran away from uh from death. What 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 was what was what was the uh comps like? We were pretty much making bets on whether he would live or die or not, and we were, every, everyone that was dead was just following him on the screen to see where he would end up. Yeah. Uh. Any anything anything hype anything uh. Anything else you'd want to add to that, or or was it just you making bets on your on your teammates' life? <laughs> it, it, we, we were hyped when that happened. We got hyped. We we're like, damn. Yeah. And from that, we just like, you know what? Let's just start start getting it together and just go for the wins. Yeah. Uh, it, it was the same thing on the on the caster desk as well. We were we were it, probably more surprised than you guys. Yeah, I was super hyped. It was they were a really good game. Some of the fights were a little sloppy and a little uncoordinated at times because you tell you're just <clears> catching <throat> people out, you know, just working on your feet. But you managed to like take those opportunities in those moments and make them work for you guys. So overall, it was really good play. Um, anything about the team? Uh, how's Moonalicious uh like when uh? Are you guys more of a for fun try to get the win? Or are you uh, t- taking a more competitive edge now that we're uh, heading into postseason? Honestly, uh, for the most part, we try to be really chill about it because in the past we've had teammates. Well, I, I believe they're no longer in this league, but we've had teammates rage and stuff like that. So we try to keep it as relaxed as possible, even if we want to win. You know, just trying to keep uh, the spirits up at all times. Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, tilt, uh, especially, um, especially team tilt is uh, disastrous. Uh, oh, I completely and, agree. Yeah. Everybody, everybody, got to keep a level. Do you have any thoughts on your opponent of Ace Venturas? I mean, I thought they were pretty good. They had an idea of what they wanted to play and how they wanted to play. The only difference between us was that our team was more reliant on massive communication and sticking together for a lot of team fights and to for objective control. Yeah, you guys managed to rotate skirmish and stick together a little bit more. You. Really, were able to abuse the Amumu first game, um, catching him out, and it, yeah, it seemed, that seemed to work out. Your game plan stuck too, and well, you're you're seeing the results. <laughs> it's two big wins. Any shout outs? Uh, any call outs to any future opponents in the Demasi division? Oh, we're gonna win it all, man! You heard it here first, folks. They 
They're gonna win it all. Mundalicious looking to take it all. Um, they are in first place, so congratulations on that. Wait, we're in first place now? Yeah, you guys uh, are yeah. in first place. You, you guys are 5 3 right now, I believe. Oh, damn. Yeah, so wow. They're, they are even more surprised than us. Um, but I, I think that's all the time we have tonight. Yeah. I don't have any other questions, really. I mean, I think we pretty much asked it all. Besides, we really wanted to ask Steve-O how good it feels to shake his tail feathers and just run away like a god <laughs> in that NAR game. Yeah. That's like a highlight of the year right there. That NAR, yeah, that, that NAR yeah. escape is just gross. It was hilarious. That was uh, really well played. So, GG. Thanks for the interview. Congratulations on the game. Let everybody Thanks, know. Guys. I'll probably hear the VOD. But, yeah, congratulations, Moon Delicious. Thanks, guys. Yeah. See you guys later. Have a wonderful night. Well, right. Joe, I mean, I there think, he goes. I think that's it. I think that was a, a, ber- a, a perfectly played, uh, beautiful two-game series for Moon Delicious. Uh, GG really to both to, teams. Really goes to show, Joe, that even even when it's the Demasi division, even when we're looking at some some you know lower elo players, and someone might think a little lower of what what to expect out of a game like this. Sometimes, like the, you know. Something, some, They're something, intense, man. yeah. Sometimes the the stars align and you get some really hype plays and everything's really cool. No matter how the quality of the game, Joe, I'm just yeah. glad that I'm here casting alongside you, little buddy. Oh, I, I can we? Okay, nice. <laughs> <laughs> I think we should end it here, though. Yeah. I okay. guess any more mushy gushy. Yeah, this has been uh, Joe Killer and Death Adder. Thank you for watching. Good night, everybody. Good night.